Hello. Hey, you're back. Back. Let me guess, you have a gun you want to sell. You're right. <laughs> Rob's a gun guy. He comes in the shop a lot, and he always has some sort of interesting firearm to sell. All right, what do we got this time? What I've got is a Savage Navy, 36 caliber. OK. Um, Savage Navy. That is one ugly gun. No, that's not an ugly gun, Rick. That's a Navy gun, and it's pretty to me. This is because it has something to do with the damn Navy. That'll work. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to try to sell my Savage Navy revolver from the Civil War. It's extremely unusual design. I keep coming back here because, hey, they keep buying my guns. What am I to do? Yeah, this is really cool. I've never actually seen one of these things in person. I've never even had one in the store. They started making these in, like, 1862, 1861, yes, somewhere around there? Yes, they are making them right at the height of the war. As long as they could make it different, they could make it and sell it, and the government would buy it, because the government would buy any gun at this point. Well, like any entrepreneur, if there's money to be made, they found a way to make it. Yeah. That's the gun that resulted. So basically, cock it with your middle finger, and then fire it with your index finger. The thought was that was a good mechanism, because you could fire them a little quicker. I really don't see the advantage. More of a pain in the ass than it's worth. I mean, it's, it's heavy, it's awkward feeling, it just wants to tilt down. One of the goofiest designs. That's why I love it. These two fools don't know what they're talking about. Anything to do with the US Navy is high class. So I'm assuming you want to sell this like the rest of them? That's what I'm looking to do, that's right. I don't know how important this screw is right here. There's just too much, too many questions I have about this thing. Let me call someone in, let them look at it, um, and get an idea what I can pay for it. Okay? That's, that's all right. You bet. All right, I'll be right back. You bet. I can understand him bringing in an expert. He doesn't know how much I know and how much of mine is just smoke. So he needs to bring someone in to make sure he knows what he's getting. Greg, how's it going, man? Greetings, pawn shop brokers. How are you today? <laughs> yeah, the guys call me down when they get an antique firearm uh, that they want to know uh, more about. They want me to evaluate its condition, a value estimation, that sort of thing. This is what I would call a proto-double action. It's one of the first uh, double action revolvers, and the concept was that you could shoot a lot more quickly. In reality, not so much. The gun was very complex, so there was plenty of room for mechanical error and failure. Not very popular. They sold about 11,000 out of the 20,000 made to the government. The rest went to the civilian market. Why? Because the gun sucked. <laughs> so this is civilian. It's definitely not a uh, government-issued weapon. The interesting follow-on, though, is that the civilians often transported them south, uh, and they became used by the Confederacy as well. And for that reason, it's a neat collectible. The Savage Navy is an interesting firearm because it's a technology that, while it led to the double-action revolver, the idea did not work very well. It looks all there. I mean, um, there isn't any major damage to it besides the finish more or less being gone. There's a screw missing on the bottom. Uh, yep, you're right. I know what your next question is. Yeah, how much is it worth? Yeah. Um, you know, the good news is it's not restored in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, usually when you get a gun that's in this type of condition, someone will have made an attempt to restore it. You know, it's going to be a civilian model, and that's going to be the primary driving force behind its price. Of course, condition being the other driving force. So okay. I would say, uh, in its condition, as it sits, the gun's probably worth retail. $1,800 to $2,000. OK. Thanks, man. Thank you. Take care. A bad idea means they don't make very many, and that's one of the ingredients for something being very collectible. If you've got a Civil War collection, you have to have one of these guns. $800, Rick. Uh, no, no, that's not going to happen. No, I'm thinking more like $1,250, though. I really am. Uh, what, uh, you know, I was hoping to get about 1800 for the gun, OK? Yeah, well, that's I think what that's we want to get out of. I, I think you'll do a little better. They're really hard to find. I, I know they're a hard gun to find, but they sit around a long time. It's a weird gun, so. 1650 uh, I'll go 1300 bucks. 1575 I'll go 1300 bucks. 1550 1300 bucks. I, I mean, I can't do it, 1300 Sure you can. No, I can't. 14 and a half. That's really the best I can do. I'll go 1350. 1400 and I'll do that. And we'll shake hands and I'll walk away and you know I'm going to come back with some more cool stuff. Yeah, I'll do 1400. All right. I'll do 1400. Touchdown. Okay. You Thanks. got to us again. Now that I got $1400, I'm just going to find another gun and do it all over again.
Hey, how's it going? It's going well. What do we got here? It's a World War II naval uniform. Hey, Pops, do you recognize this? I'll be honest with you, Rick, this brings back a lot of fond memories. Yeah, but I don't think you have any memory of you being this small. <laughs> I'm going into the pawn shop to try to sell my U.S. Navy uniform. I bought a storage unit and it had a uniform in it and I figured somebody could probably use it and I, I can't do anything with it anyway, so I'm hoping it's worth $150. That's what I paid for the storage unit, so I'm hoping I can at least get that back. This is a Second World War issue. I mean, are you sure about that? Isn't this the hat they wore in World War I? Yes, son, I'm sure of it. I wore one of these for about 15 oh, years. Oh, I remember. I remember being a kid. You make me polish your shoes. Stone cold. <laughs> Anyhow. Don't I look World War I-ish? Really? <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> you're dumb as a board. My old man really knows what he's talking about when it comes to Navy stuff. But in my opinion, I think he's slipping. This really looks World War I to me. I can't imagine putting this thing on. Look at all this. It's just 13 buttons. Like I say, I wore one for years, son. How in the world did you go to the bathroom in this thing? You undid your flap. <laughs> Why did sailors wear bell bottoms? Um, because they're fashion popas. I don't know. <laughs> the bend for bell bottom trousers was if you ever went in the water, they would be easy to take off. Makes sense. What do you want to do with it, guy? You want to sell it? You bond it? I, I want to sell it. I'm, I'm hoping for 150. No. 125. No, 50 bucks and that's it. These things retail for 125, and I gotta make a profit. And they're really not flying off the shelf. But 100? No. 75? Um, 50 sounds good. That right. Sounds like a deal. Thanks. I still think it's World War I. You're wrong. I bet you a dollar it's World War I. Or pre-World War II anyway. No, it's Second World War. I'm always having to prove stuff to my dad, so it looks like I'm gonna have to bring somebody in and settle this thing once and for all. How you doing? Ah, oh, great. Thank God you're here. <laughs> Sounds like you've got a disagreement. <laughs> I had a disagreement that he's an idiot. <laughs> Rick thinks he knows everything, but I wore that uniform for 18 years. I know what I'm talking about. Explain to my dad how this uniform is from World War I. Okay. <laughs> I'm Mark. I'm the administrator of the Clark County Museum. When Rick runs into a piece of military that he'd like to have somebody take a look at, he'll often give me a call and I'll come down and take a look at it. Well, when I look, especially at Navy uniforms, Navy uniforms didn't change much. I mean, once you got past 1905, the basic uniform style stayed the same. But then what I look at is what's here and what's not here. Uh, and that's where I can tell you what this is. I think it's interesting that Rick would challenge a 20-year Navy veteran on Navy uniforms, but this is one that is an understandable dispute because the uniform was so similar in World War I, between the wars, in World War II. Okay, so are you ready for the answer? Hurry up, Mark. I need my dollar. Okay, well, whoever voted for World War II gets the dollar. Give me my dollar, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm right. I don't bet money unless I know I'm going to win. What's most important to say that this is a World War II uniform is this, what's not here. If you were um, a veteran of World War II, honorably discharged at the end of the war, you were entitled to wear an insignia that showed that you had been in the military and honorably discharged after the war. And it was called a ruptured duck. It's, it's a bird with a flag in the background. And the ruptured duck symbol was sewn here. You can see the shape of that. Okay. Hey, Rick, where's my damn dollar? Where's your damn dollar, for the love of God? <laughs> Thank you, Rick. This poor boy appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hey, all right, got some uh, memorabilia off the USS uh, Shawanik. The Shawanik? This is your old ship, Bops. No kidding, son. Wow, that's awesome. You have one of those in your uniform at home, so. Oh, yeah, they go on your right shoulder. Okay, but you don't exactly fit in your uniform anymore. No, that's not that's, <laughs> that's, that's I came to the pawn shop today to sell my letters and patches from the USS Chawanek. 
I was in the Army. I collect patches and other military memorabilia. I want to sell it to uh, make more room for more stuff. Brings back a lot of memories. I was on board from 72 to 76. So where did you get these? I've just been collecting it over the years. My father was a general foreman in the Norfolk Naval Shipyard, so it got me interested in collecting Navy memorabilia. OK. This patch right here, the ship's number was ATF 100, right? Correct. All right. Auxiliary Fleet Tug, ATF. So auxiliary is when it's not a battle t uh, ship, right? That's a correct. ship that goes in the battle. All right. You know anything about fleet tugs? So I guess I did salvage, fire rescue. OK. In the Second World War, the fleet tugs were built primarily to pull the boats off the beach so they could reuse the boats. The Germans and the Japanese were, that was a primary target they were after. A lot of fleet tugs got sunk. A lot of them got damaged, including the Tawanik. But the Tawanik's still sailing. It was sold to Ecuador, and it's still in the Ecuador Navy today. A lot of the stuff that comes to the pawn shop has some amazing history behind it. But it's pretty rare when the history becomes personal. I've been hearing stories from my dad about being on this ship my entire life. So having this stuff show up on our counter is pretty incredible. This is commanding officer to some Joseph someone, 1969, 1973, and 1972. You were on it then. I probably the one that mailed this uh, this piece right here. I worked for the CO. Wow. So uh, you want these? What's he want for them? Well, I guess since he's on the ship, I'll take 20. It's part of my history, son. I mean, I spent a good portion of my life aboard this base. All right, I'll meet you up front. I'll write you up. Right. Yeah, I'll write it up. I'm going to put these in my office, son. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you can buy military patches like this on the internet, getting a chance to own letters that my dad might have handled during his Navy days is an opportunity I couldn't pass up. How you doing this morning, son? Good. I got this flagship admiral phone I wanted to come show you. They were called flag phones, and it's pretty cool. Flag phone? That's what they called it in the Navy. So you actually did something in the Navy besides hustle young seamen out of their paycheck? <laughs> <laughs> I came down to the pawn shop today to try and sell my flagship admiral's phone. I'd like to sell this item because, to be honest, I just want the money. I'm going to start out probably at $3,000 today, and I think anything over five, six hundred dollars would be perfect. Do you know anything about this, sir? This would have been the phone that would have been on the flagship for the admiral to use. That's correct. Back then, the captain was in charge of his ship. When you got a group, a battleship, destroyers, and cruisers. They had an admiral in charge of the whole group. These was brought aboard with the admiral so that he could communicate with his crew, with the captain. OK. Admirals is to the Navy what generals are to the Army. An admiral could be in charge of thousands of sailors. So a phone like this would be a good way to give orders. The one thing that I found the most interesting, there's an actual spot to the atomic strike room. All the admiral had to do was pick this up and press this button and just say, nuke him? Yeah. The admiral did what he had to do. OK. I love the design. I mean, it's definitely 1930s, 1940s design, and continued using it through the 1950s. Yeah. Since so many people have served in the Navy or have family members that have, there's a pretty healthy market for Navy memorabilia. And this thing is definitely easy to display. So it should be an easy sell. So what do you want to do with this thing? Well, I'd like to sell it. How much you want for it? I was thinking $3,000. You keep thinking, I'm going to give you a shot. If you want it, fine. If you don't, fine. I'll give you $500 for it. With your history in the Navy, though, this would be a good piece for you to have. I think you should step it up to 700 Son, I'm 70 years old, and all I collect anymore is $100 bills. Well, I'd like to start by collecting six of those on my own. You'll get five. That, or you can plug it out of here. 500 is it, my friend. Well. It is pretty heavy. I guess 500 to do it. All right. Rick, go write it up. I'll meet you right in front of me. All right. They were certainly tough negotiators on this, and uh, I was probably out of my league in that regard. But $500 richer than I was when I came in today. What do you have? This is a paperweight from the USS Guadalcanal that was given to my uncle commemorating the sinking 
of the U-68 by the USS Guadalcanal. That's pretty cool. Well, I came to the pawn shop because I have a piece of World War II memorabilia that I'd like to sell. My Uncle Frankie gave it to me. I would like to get about $3,000. I won't go under $1,000. It was made from a ballast tank that rose to the surface after the submarine exploded. OK. It's really neat this is off a submarine. Thank you, sir. Um, this picture is my uncle. And he's on the stern of the uh, USS Guadalcanal. All right, so this is off a U-boat sunk in 10 April 1944 by the USS Guadalcanal. That's correct. A U-boat is Navy slang for a German sub. These things were fierce. During World War I, they caused incredible havoc. Just due to the fact that World War I, we didn't have sonar, so they could sneak up in impunity. Some of the highest casualties the US Navy had was the submarine. Thousands of ships got sunk by U-boats. Um, by 1944, sonar had really advanced. That really changed the war. I mean, we were sinking U-boats left and right. Being on a ship wasn't as dangerous, and being on a U-boat was much more dangerous. The U-68 sank a lot of ships, so it was a pretty big deal when we sunk it. The escort carrier USS Guadalcanal sunk this thing with depth charges and rockets back in 1944. It was international news. Only one person out of 57 survived. Um, online, I finally found a photograph of this piece that um, verifies the authenticity of it. I mean, this is a cool, heavy chunk of steel right off the U-68. I love things like this, especially since it's from such a pivotal moment during World War II. I'm sure it will appeal to a lot of collectors. So what do you want to do with it? I'd like to sell it. How much do you want for it? I'd like 3000 Usually when you try and get prices like this, you look for something similar, OK, and try and figure out a price there. Well, there's nothing similar. I just got to go on what I figure on things like this. So I'll give you 1000 bucks. So I'd like to balance that in between and ask for 15. Can we make it 1,200? How about one more hundred so we can have dinner tonight? Well, what the hell, Rick, go for it. All right, $1,300. All right, I'll meet you up front. When you negotiate anything, you never really take the first offer. We settled for 1,300, and I'm very pleased with that. Hey, how's it going? How you doing today? Doing fine. What do we got? This is the United States Navy sextant from the USS Hector in 1941. Back in the day, they were a great precision instrument. That's how you knew where you were at in the middle of the ocean. I use it to find my way home every day. I came to the pawn shop today to sell my Navy sextant. A sextant is a tool that they use to navigate the ships with. I'm here today to sell because I need money. So how'd you get it, man? I came across it from an old sailor that had bought it. It's the only one in existence from the USS Hector. Tell me about the USS Hector. The history is there with the Vulcan, the Hector, and the Ajax. I was on the USS Ajax. I was in the Navy. Okay. And these were three repair ships that were in the Second World War, Korean, and also in Vietnam. They were all highly decorated. I've heard of them. I was in the Navy. So you were in the Navy too, yeah, huh? 21 years. You know, I've seen them a million times. I still don't exactly know how they work, and pretty much why would I have never been on a ship? Well, they would go out on deck, and they look through this at the stars, and then they would set the latitude and longitude with these numbers on here. The people had to know what they were doing. This is not something that a layman can use and make work. It took real skill to be a navigator. Put someone like Chumley in charge of one of these, he might set off for Hawaii and end up in the North Pole. So what do you want to do with it, my man? I need to sell it. Any idea of how much you're looking to get out of it? Well, because we were both in the Navy and we're both good looking, I'll give you a deal on it today. <laughs> uh, you can have it for $390. Thanks for the compliments, sir. You have people that collect precision instruments, collect them. But at 390, I'm not comfortable. I would be comfortable at 200 for this. That way, I can ask three, take the first 275, and walk through the door. 
I would negotiate with you. I'd come down some, uh, what's a split the difference between 200 and 390? What is no, that? No, I can't do that. 250, how about that? Can you go 260, 265s? Now, I'd be comfortable with 265. Corey, give him the 265. Let's end it up. All right, deal. Thank you. This is a very nice piece. Not like that GPS crap that people use to get around. Hey, what's up? What do you got here? It's a Liberty Pass from the US Arizona, which was, of course, sunk during Pearl Harbor. It's really neat. I mean, I know they get you off your ship when you're looking to go, you know, take your liberty and get some free time. Well, you have one from the Arizona and the Mississippi. A destroyer is named after a state, right? No, battleships are named after states. Yeah, can you tell he was in the Navy? Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I came down to the pawn shop today to try to sell my Liberty Passes from the USS Arizona and USS Mississippi. 175 will probably be my lowest I can go, but 200 is definitely what I'm looking for. Where in the world did you get these? I was going through my grandfather's personal military effects and found this in one of his sea bags. OK. When the USS Arizona sank, I remember this is the starting of World War II. No one expected this. This came completely out of the blue. There's speculation that someone left a door to the powder room open and the fire got in there and, you know, literally thousands of pounds of powder went off at once. And it went down in a matter of seconds. The guys didn't have a chance. In the Navy, a Liberty Pass gives you official permission to leave the ship for a little free time. But on December 7th, 1941, a Liberty Pass could have saved your life. That's the day the Arizona was sunk in the attack on Pearl Harbor. Over 1,100 sailors lost their life. This one here was issued in San Pedro. That's before uh, the Arizona moved to Pearl Harbor into the Seventh Fleet over there. What happened when you came back off of Liberty, there was a box on the quarter deck. You dropped it in. But you wouldn't get to keep one of these? No. So these are pretty rare? Yes. You rarely see these. And since one of them is from one of the most famous ships of World War II, I think collectors would buy these in a minute. So what do you want to do with these? Well, actually, I'm, I'm fixing to get married. So I'm actually looking just to see how much they were worth. As far as the Mississippi, I don't see a lot of money there. This one's neat because it's from the Arizona. Right. You know, I'll, I'll give you 100 bucks. $100 ain't going to do it. I mean, it's, it's a pretty personal item. I mean, I was definitely looking for at least 200. I'll tell you what, I'll go 150. Nah, uh, nah. It's a, nah. it's a fair price. That's the best you can do is 150. With 150, I'm not going to go dime more. Uh, all right, all, all right. right, 150 it is. All right, let's go. Let's go do some paperwork. I'll meet you right up front. All right. This guy didn't seem to be too happy with my offer, but you know what? He could walk away at any time. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? So you got an old green box. It's a World War II Navy phone system. In battle, the entire phone system could be knocked out with one shot. You would need something like this to continue communications. If they took out the communication system, they probably took out the entire ship. <laughs> The phone system was handed down from my aunt. Communication on a ship, especially during battle, is critically important. I'd like to get 4,000 today. It's in great condition, and I think the guys are going to be very interested. I spent time on Second World War destroyers. This is a portable supplement system. Let's say a flag officer came aboard with his staff. They brought their own phone system. All of them had a phone in their staterooms. OK, so if somebody else came on the ship, you know, somebody important, then they would bring this on and they yeah, would wire it up so he was part of the phone system, too. It's completely original, completely intact. There were no cellular phones or Wi-Fi on board ship back in the day. Everything had to be hardwired in. But I'll tell you what, your calls didn't get dropped like they do now. Any idea what you want to get out of it? Um. $4,000 is a very fair price for something like this. There's a problem I have with it. World War II collectors don't collect phone systems and stuff. They buy a piece to display it. This is so huge, it would be almost impossible for someone to display it in their home or their rec room or whatever. 
Well, I mean, this piece is obviously so pristine that uh, somebody's gonna wanna do something with it. Granted, if I bought it, do I think over the next 10 years I could sell it? Probably. But it's not what I wanna tie up my money in. Okay. All right, I appreciate it, man, but there's nothing I can do for you. All right, thanks, thanks a lot. lot. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you, sir. Thank you. I think he made a mistake. They really didn't know what they had. He missed a very big opportunity. What do we got here? This is a World War II uh, original panoramic photo of the Las Vegas Army Airfield in 1944. It took so many people to make those planes fly. This is probably a squadron of 10 planes. Look how many people's involved. Wow. I've always been fascinated by World War II. I believe the people who fought in it are heroes. We really need some work done in our house, so I had to sell some of my collection. I was hoping to get 500, but I'd probably take 200. So where'd you get this? I believe I bought it at an antique shop. I'm a teacher, and this is the kind of thing I would bring into my classroom if I was talking about World War II and, and the sacrifice that uh, the men made. The guys had to fly at least 25 combat missions over Germany, and in some cases, over half the guys never came back. Uh, I remember my father walking up to the front door when he came home from the war. I was a kid, it felt great. This was a great time in American history. I mean, this was a war that literally every single person did something in the United States to contribute. These men went through hell and back to make our country what it is today. That's why they're called the greatest generation. These days, I can't even get these kids to go to the store and back unless there's something in it for them. These look like B-17s to me. I'm almost certain that's what they are. Didn't you and Chumley just fly in one of those not too long ago? Yeah, we flew one out at North Las Vegas Airport. It was a little shake, rattle, and roll, but it was comfortable enough I got to take a nap, Corey. That's because you can sleep anywhere. <laughs> It's always cool to see photos from World War II. And the fact that this one was actually taken in Las Vegas makes it perfect for our shop. But unfortunately, just because it's a part of history doesn't really make it worth big bucks. So um, how much were you looking to get out of it? I'd like to get $500 for it. I'd like to have it, but I ain't going to pay no $500. You rode in one of these. Yeah. And I can get on a computer right now and print him out a picture if he wants one that bad. <laughs> I mean, to be realistic with you, my man, I mean, we're talking maybe $40, $50 here. Well, you know, you've got World War II. Las Vegas doesn't look like this anymore. So you've got, you know, your Las Vegas people are going to want it. I could go 400 It would be a hard sell. I would like to have it just to hang in the store. I'm going to push it up to 75 but that's the top of the mark, Corey. <sighs> How about $300? you are never going to find one like this. Look, I'll push it up to a $100 bill because I'd like to have it. But I ain't going no damn higher. You either take the 100 or you walk home with it. How about you meet me halfway? I said three. I met you as far as I can meet. All right, I guess I'm going to have to walk out with it. Hey, thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Have a good day. There's just no way I would have taken $100. I really think they could have got 500 bucks for it. But that's OK. I'm just going to have to sell some other things to get the money to remodel my home now.